Hello, sim captains and aviation enthusiasts. Today we're going to be unboxing this new board game, Pan Am by Funko. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high quality aviation content and entertainment. All right, let's start by taking a look inside. I will admit I took a little peek slightly earlier today. First off though, we have this beautiful box. Honestly, I would have bought it for the logo alone. Fantastic stylized art from the era of Pan Am all around the edges. A lot of good travel icons listed there. So here we go, Pan Am Triumph in the Golden Age of Air Travel. According to the back of the box, from island hoppers of the 1930s to glamorous jetliners of the 1960s, Pan Am set the pace of the airline industry. Compete with Pan Am and other players as the head of your own fledgling airline. Expand your fleet of planes, build airports, outbid rivals for landing rights, create your own globe circling air system play through the decades of air travel history alongside ever-growing pan am make a fortune when they buy your routes invest in pan am stock when it's cheap and don't get pushed out of the skies by your competition and you've got a little preview of what we're going to find inside all right so let's open the box i picked this up from target i believe it was 34.99 just released about a week, week and a half ago. Lovely box, and if you like the flying meatball logo of Pan Am, the entire lining is filled with it. If you haven't guessed already, a huge Pan Am fan, so everything about this hits me at the right spot. All right, so what do we have inside here? Instructions, well, let's do that last. Uh, again, stylized for the period. Paper's got kind of a slightly aged look to it. All the graphics are just like any of the classic Pan Am stuff you'd find. I lied. Let's go inside now. I'm not going to read this to you because no one wants to hear directions read to them, but uh, I'm liking the layout and the way they did this. Now, my impression maybe yours read the back of the box, is this is going to be sort of an airline monopoly. That's what I'm expecting us to get out of this. So let's grab uh, the next item. Here's we have the game board. Now normally uh, most board games are either a, a long split fold or a you know quadrants folded into fours. When I peeked at this earlier though, I noticed something interesting. We have been folded here. See, it looks like it's going to be fours. It's in six. It's a very large game board. There we go. The big reveal. Da, da, da. That's a beauty. And it's huge. This thing is enormous. I mean, not like too enormous to play, but uh, it, it's a nice large map. And checking it out, one thing I really like, this is not the Mercator projection. You know, the map you always see. The Mercator projection is a navigational map, so it makes sense for some things. But for this game, you'll notice we centered here, so we have the North Pole functionally here. The U.S. going down to South America. Those are your classic Pan Am routes. And then coming across the pole, we have Asia and Europe represented, which, you know, really this is a fantastic way to do the game, particularly since... Um, you know, once you're going Transpac, Trans-Pacific, you're either doing polar routes or, or going very close to the Arctic Circle because that's your shortest, straightest actual path where the Mercator projection would stink. So beautiful game board, very large. You can see we have some squares here for where we're going to lay out some cards. Current destination. This might, I'm not quite sure how the gameplay goes yet. And I see aircraft down the side. So that's a beautiful game board. I'm digging that. Let's get back into the box. Let's see what's next. All right, we have some punch outs we're gonna have to do. They're two-sided. 
we've got a bunch of ones, I don't know what those represent, and these. And they're not just a piece of paper, this is like a thick card. There's two ply here. So once that comes out, that might be a game token. Round three, round six. Well, we'll find out when we get playing it. Uh, and here's the back side. And check out all these little Pan Am logos. Those are sweet. I like it. Good stuff. All right. Ooh. There's good things in here. So if you like any of the stuff of this era and the style, you're just going to dig the way they did everything here. It looks fantastic. Now, one of these I already opened earlier. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. First here, we've got a stack of stock cards. So that's representing five shares of Pan Am stock. I'll see if I can get it closer. If not, I'll include some images after post-production. Here's one share of the Pan Am stock. Again, very classic look, very good fidelity. Now, here's the one I opened earlier because I took a first whack at recording this, but my, my children would not be quiet, so I ditched it. But I had to open this because these cards, I'm not quite sure how they work in the gameplay, but they have travel posters. And I love these old travel posters. So let's check these out. Let's see what we got here. The question I wanted to answer and the reason I opened it was, are they all the same? And I figured, nah, they won't be, and they're not. So here we go, uh, Buenos Aires there. So we've got Manila, just says destination on the back. So oh, I guess these are, I don't know how these work in the gameplay. Bogota, Karachi, Orta, aren't these beautiful? Just, just look at these. I mean, these are absolutely stunning. Even if you never played this game, if you like Pan Am, I'm willing to bet you would have a good time just playing with the items in this box. Because it's just a great little historical piece you've got here. All right, is, is that enough? Have we seen enough of the cards? You got the idea? We're, we're going to make it around the world here with, uh, with these destination cards. I'll have to see in the directions later if they really are all different. Looking at the map, well, they could be. There's, I'm going to guess I see at least 50 cities uh, on this map in front of me, so there might be. All right, I'll repack these more cautiously later. Let's get back to the box. So we have our stock, we have our travel coasters, and let's see what this is. It says round and we've got like a little newspaper here the newspaper says south american push round one the start of the expansion phase pan am expands once along the south american path stock price four so maybe you should go through these cards uh help to set what's going on in the era let's crack it open see what's see what we've got in here Right, so the Great Depression, still round one. Radio communications, still round one. Let's go to the back of the deck and see what we get, because uh, the game is supposed to go up through the Wan Trip era of uh, 1967. This game is supposed to take you only through Wan Trip's era, so you can avoid you can avoid Lockerbie and the. Uh, Bankruptcy of Pan Am that comes immediately thereafter. Here we go, 1958. Upgrading the fleet. Starting with the first player, each player may upgrade a plane. So these, again, I think this game is a very Monopoly-like gameplay probably to it. And these are going to start uh, telling you what to do. Oh, here we go. Worldwide headquarters. The Pan Am building in New York. Beautiful. Good stuff. All right, now... I've already liked the way they've done all the visuals on those, but the thing my kids are really interested in seeing is over here, the game pieces. So we've got uh, two, some game trays here. Uh, those are baggies of aircraft. Don't worry, we'll get to that. I'm as curious as you are. These look like dice. I think they're just markers, perhaps, because they don't have any uh, dots or numbers or anything on them. 
more aircraft. We have four colors of aircraft, so this must be a gameplay for four. Okay, here we have a plain die and some sort of holder to, uh, you know, like hold a little card or a piece up. Let's get this guy out because there we go. So here's our holder. I don't know what we're going to be holding up. And the Pan Am playing die. I gotta be honest, I don't really know what these uh, symbols are supposed to indicate. You know, actually, I, I, have, I do know what they are indicating. I was just looking down at the map. Those look like they are indicating uh, route lines. If you look at the way the routes are indicated on here, we have, you know, squares and zigzags, squares, dots, uh, the zigzags are down here on this part of the map. So it would appear the uh, plain die is to help indicate what routes we might be going on. Again, I didn't really think anybody wanted me to read the direction. If you were curious about this game, odds are you just wanted to see, you know, how well did they do with the pieces. So let's get on to the good part here. Let's, uh, let's open up some aircraft, and I'll tell you what, gray, yellow, sort of an army green, and a red. I think I'm going to do yellow because for the sake of the camera, it's probably the most high-vis color, so it's going to show up the best. I'll take a little peek in the box, though, before we get into the aircraft and see if we got anything left. All right, I've now taken out everything but those cards. And we have this one last item here. Interesting. I'm not sure what this uh, what this is. It looks like it's scoring cards. Oh, it is. Okay. So they're for different airlines. We have Premier Interglobal. Good name. Trans Imperial Airways. That sounds very British. Grand Olympian Air. Nice. Aero Cosmopolitan. Very nice. Someone had a good time making all these up. It's just sort of a mishmash of uh, many bygone airlines from the era. You can find a lot of those names, but not necessarily exactly in those combinations. All right, so here's our trays. And let's get into some of these aircraft. <laughs> Now, as I understand it, we're playing through the arrows of Pan Am, and it was kind of indicated on the box that we might be getting uh, with tri-motors, so let's see if we can find a Ford tri-motor in here. Oh, Bazinga, there you go. One Ford tri-motor. It's interesting. Yeah, there's still one flying. Uh, there was one that was here in Phoenix flying around maybe a year or two ago. Someone's kept it operating. All right, moving on up into sort of the uh, 1930s and then to the 40s, the war era, and then living on because we built so many of them forever. I shouldn't have to tell you, but that's the DC-3, the classic Dakota. That's actually the first used aircraft Pan Am ever bought. There were so many from the war, uh, they were buying them up. Prior to that, they had not been buying used aircraft. All right, and here is our uh, Boeing. This is called a Stratoliner. The aircraft code's not quite coming to my mind. This is the one that's it's basically built on the B-29 bomber. They uh, gave it an upper fuselage for the cabin compartment, but you can see the wings and everything. This is all the tech on the B-29 bomber. So, try motor into our DC-3, our Stratoliner, and then, I believe, our last development, yes, the Boeing 707. Now, for me, this is the iconic Pan Am aircraft. Uh, I was not alive for the era of the 707, as you can probably tell by looking at me. I have a few 707s still running in my childhood, but... Uh, just about almost all offline now. 
All right, so we've got these lovely little aircraft, and I'll probably include some better images of them, but let's see what other things I've got in this tray. You might be able to tell that was not all planes. We've got some marker pieces. We've got little tiny control towers. Oh, those are entertaining. I'm not sure how that works. I wonder if that's a base or an airport you control. Lots of planes, lots of planes. Okay, so there's, oh, it looks like there's about five control towers. There's about five of these little marker pieces. There's a decent handful of aircraft. I'm trying to tip it without just uh, dumping it everywhere. And then there's the ones, speaking of dumping, I already put on the table. Uh, according to the box though, I think it said we have about 50 aircraft here. There are 52 aircraft between all four players. So again, I think we've gotten our whole way through the box here. I might report back to you with a follow-up video if we uh, if we do the gameplay with, with my family and maybe we'll let you know how it went. But for now, this is Funko's Pan Am Triumph in the Golden Age of Travel board game. If you like this content, you're just a general aviation enthusiast, please give us a like and subscribe. If you're one of our sim captains who follows us uh, let us know if you like this little detour into the world of classic aviation and board games we figured it's still aviation related still kind of sim related actually almost reminds me a little bit of the stuff we're doing with air hauler even though that's a virtual so i'm tim from the flight brothers ft remember like and subscribe until next time plan the flight and fly the plane